Okay. I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Charlie and Jesse Matotoyela of uh, Blue Bear Arts, also Blue Bear Flutes. They put out this book called The Art of Native American Flute Making. And uh, uh, some of you might look at the price tag on this book and say, oh, it's like $40. So you expect to pay like, you know, $10 for a book this thick, right? Worth every penny. This book s saved me 20 years of experimenting, and he lays out patterns in this book. Um, you know, he lays out all these patterns, and here, let me get a good picture. Um, Look at this. Schematics. Secrets. Uh, things that take people years to pick up. You know, and uh, Charlie just shared it. And Charlie and Jesse. Sorry, Jesse. <laughs> they just took, they just decided to share it with the world. And um, so, yeah, it's like 40 bucks or some, somewhere up there. Um, it's like, it's like, uh, It's got information I can't put a value on it as far as uh, how much is the information worth. Um, I would have stumbled around. I, I, I want to be a flute maker too, and so someday when I grow up. But, um, you know, it would have taken me another, I bet it would have taken me another, well, I don't know. I learned quick. So it might not have taken me that long, maybe five or ten years to figure out some of the things that he put in his book. <clears throat> I don't think it would take me 20, but um, yeah, worth every penny. These are some of the creations I've made, and um, where's my coffee? It's up here. And uh, he lists materials, this is mainly for the people in the Northwest now, he lists materials like river cane. Well, we don't have any river cane up here. <clears throat> what we do have is knotweed. It's... Um, grows along the rivers. It's uh, listed as uh, invasive. Uh, everyone's trying to kill it. And it, and I mean, I know people that have used a, um, what's that stuff? Roundup on it. It just keeps on growing. Um, one recipe I heard online on how to kill it was spray it with Roundup, cover it with carpet. When it comes back up through that carpet, spray it with Roundup again and throw another carpet on top of it. And that should do it. I mean, that's how tough this plant is. I, I heard a rumor, I don't know if it's true, the government was trying to kill it with Agent Orange. Like, really? But here's the thing. This plant, invasive as it is, um, maybe there's reason why it's so invasive. Maybe this plant has things we need. Um, turns out it does. They're using, uh, they're taking... Uh, Reversitrol from the roots of this plant, Japanese knotweed, to create to treat Lyme's disease, and um, it's uh, it's an anti-inflammatory. The plant is good for anything that ends with itis. What's that? Appendicitis, tonsillitis, arthritis. It's an anti-inflammatory. Not only that, uh, the new shoots. I just tried some this year for the first time. In the springtime, the new shoots are coming up. Break one off and bite into that thing. It tastes like rhubarb. It's absolutely edible and good for you. And it's good, and it's good tasting, too, if you like rhubarb. I like rhubarb. So, and then, but I wanted to share that it makes a great flute, too. Here's a, it has a, it has a smooth inner liner that creates this beautiful resonance that, uh, well, here's a flute I made out of it has this beautiful resonance that is really nicer than my cedar flutes or my maple flutes, in my opinion. And see how easily it jumps around from octave to octave? It's so... can't go four. But all these knotweed flutes are jumping three octaves really easily. And um, 
you know, and I I had a problem with, you know, when you smooth down this area, the nest, or where the bird goes, the material on a lot of them is so thin, it didn't leave enough strength there. I, I'd like make one successfully, the traditional style, you know, air chamber, up over the flue, sound chamber, divided by a node right here. And I would ruin two, make a good one, ruin three. <laughs> I wasn't having very much luck. So I took one of the techniques that Charlie and Jesse um, show in their book on how to make the uh, Cherokee four hole whistle. It's a whistle. You know, they teach you how to, they teach you how to make a whistle like this. This is a whistle. This is your traditional Native American. And this is a, this is a, a whistle. You know, it's just a plug. You don't have to, you don't have to put a bird here. The, you know, you blow in there, and it blows directly over this, uh, this leading edge of a sound hole here. Okay, I'll study the terminology. And now these, see, I didn't have to flatten down a spot. So now, all the Japanese knotweed flutes I'm making are turning out great. I think it'd be, I think they're, you know, you can't strap a, your bird on top of there, but um, and this I made combining, you know, the technique he shows how to make this type of flute, the Native American style where you got your sound chamber and then the technique where he shows how to make the Cherokee four hole whistle. Just combine the two and you, and they sound better than that. Let's <laughs> see, so try again. Let's see. Oh, also in Charlie's book, I didn't rehearse this. He shows you how to make drone flutes, and the knotweed lends itself. I just took two of them, made one like Charlie showed in in his videos, and 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 the and the videos that Jesse took. <laughs> I Jesse, I don't know why it is us guys. We always like. Notice how many times I've said Charlie and how few times I've said Jesse. I know it's not right. And I know it's not. But, but see, and then when I read a book that says by Charlie and Jesse, I tend to take, say the first name first. Let's say this. Here's a book uh, written by uh, Jesse Matatoyella. Oh, and Charlie. See, that's how it should be right. <laughs> anyway, you want to make something like this? Jesse and Charlie show you. Yeah. Now, is this worth 40 bucks? I think so. Are all these together worth 40 bucks? Heck yeah. So that's a shout out for the art of Native American flute making. By Jesse and Charlie Metatayla. <laughs> Later.